Hi everyone, my name is Sukino. Um, I am the maker of Skitter, um, working with the PSE team. And today I'm going to give a little demo of Skitter. And before I go into demo, I want to talk a little bit about why I make that, um, why I make Skitter. So we have a bunch of like social media application these days. Um, what's the problem with that? Why do we need another one? Um, so I think most people know that these platforms use our data against us. They use our data to optimize fees, optimize advertisements, and kind of like coerce or you know whatever word we want to use. But they make us pay more attention to the stuff they want us to pay attention to, based on you know how we use the data. The problem with that is like if you have a small bias toward a worldview they will actually create an echo chamber to kind of make that small bias and turn that into like something more, much more stubborn, much more difficult to change. Um, like, I think world opinion by itself is already kind of divided without a slippery slope like this, but with all these um, optimizations, it kind of turned our attention or it kind of make our opinion even wider between the two sides of the spectrum, which is something that I think is problematic. The feeling that I get when I make a posting on like Twitter or Facebook or you know centralized social media these days is like jumping into an ocean full of sharks. Basically, I don't know when I'm going to get bitten. I don't know if they like me. I don't know if they like something that I said in the past. But it feels like at any point they can like attack me cancel me and if I got canceled I'm basically that socially like I, I lose my social reputation I lose my friends it's a problem um, here's one of my favorite quote man is at least himself when he talks in his own person give him a mask and he will tell you all the truth um, which is why I am making skitter as a anonymous Twitter basically I want to build features that is friendly toward anonymous users um, allow them to um, say whatever they want while still having some kind of reputations. That way, um, we can identify like what kind of posts is more highly reputable, more credible, what kind of posts are like trolls and shit posts. So instead of doing a live demo, I take screenshot instead because internet is pretty bad, but the website is live and I highly encourage everyone to try it out. Um, for this use case, I'm demoing how to create a anonymous users using your wallet. So in Skitter, you basically can create one of two different identity. Um, you can either create a wallet address identity, which is pretty self-explanatory. For anonymous users, um, here's what you do. So first of all, you connect to your Twitter account. And once you connect to your Twitter account, you will be assigned one of the few groups based on your reputations. Um, this, is in, um, this integration with Interweb basically allows us to have four tiers, unrated, I think, bronze, silver, and gold. And after that, we'll create a semaphore identity. Um, and in order to do that, instead of doing a random identity, we are deriving it from a sign message through your wallet. That way, if you lose it, you can always connect to your wallet and we'll be able to recover your identity. So after that, you are, you know, you're done. You are, you are now able to make different posts um, using the anonymous identity that you created. Right here, we, we can see a couple of different identity already being used. There's a tier for Twitter users with over 2,000 followers. I think that's um, ISK. And <laughs> sorry for doxing you. <laughs> um, we also have a TAC member. So if you visit our temporary anonymous song um, later on today, you will be able to join as a TAC member. And you can make posts without you know showing who you are. Um, and then there's another Twitter tier right there. Um, and next I'm going to <laughs> next I'm going to demo another features. Um, so what I just demo is the ability to create groups based on your Twitter reputations. Um, this one is more for users who want to create private groups. So here I have a account. Um, it's called PBX Fan Club. Any Rick and Morty friends would know Mr. Poopy Butthole has a lot of fans, a lot of families. Um, <laughs> you can basically add your profile, make that a group profile. And after you make that group profile, you can send invitations to different members. Um, and now that I switched to my account, um, I can see that I receive an invitation from Mr. Poopy Butthole. 
And after I accept the invitations, when I try to make a post, I will actually have the options to instead of post as Tsukino, I can choose to post as a member of PPH um, fan club. And people can, you know, create their own group, experiment with, you know, any kind of things that they want to do. Um, and the next features I want to show is CK Chat, which I think is really cool. So basically, I kind of build like a regular chat message is end-to-end -end encrypted um, that you can use to talk to anyone in the network. The difference is when you initiate a chat with someone, say, right now I'm trying to talk to Tsukino as Yagami Light. Um, I can choose to talk to him as Yagami, which, you know, you will see my message and my profile and my name. Or I can actually talk to him secretly. Um, he wouldn't know who I am, but um, I can choose to reveal to him in this chat or not. But this kind of gives us an idea of like how these reputation, different kind of identity can work with each other. Um, and as more and more groups get created, you can think of use cases such as you have a group for every DAO member who has made a vote on certain DAO. Um, and then you can speak as a member of the DAO and you can use the identity to reach out to someone. And that would allow you to, again, give a person a mask, they will be more likely to tell you the truth and they will be able to give more honest opinion about your protocol, your ideas, your worldview or whatever. Um, that's kind of it for the demo. We have a lot of like, new ideas, new features coming up. Feel free to come to me, uh, come visit me at um, the temporary anonymous song. I will be there the rest of the day and tomorrow. And here's my profile on Skitter. Feel free to check it out. Again, the internet is pretty bad, but please check it out at home. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, we do have a bit of time for questions. I see a couple of hands up. Hello. Um, stupid question, why don't you just be anonymous on Twitter? Um, so if you're anonymous on Twitter, how do I know? Um, like, so when, so I do have an anonymous account on Twitter. When I create that account, the ability that I lost is all the followers that I used to have. I either have to ask for some of my friends to follow me again, which I would dox myself. Um, or I have to like use my real life account to kind of like retweet it, which again, will dox myself. Um, but with this, we can bring in Twitter reputations, we can bring in GitHub reputations, we can bring in a reputation from other places, add it to your account without telling back to who you are. And now when you create a non-account, you will have higher visibility, you will have higher credibility um, without having to start from zero. Cool. Yes. And sorry, my team, so I'm going to add also, you can choose when you post how much you reveal about your identity yep. within Skitter. So you can be totally anonymous when you post or you can sort of reveal your Skitter identity so you have a lot more flexibility, which yep. I think is really cool. Um, over here. So is there any optimization of your feed at all? I'm just trying to think about if I got a feed that was highly rated stuff, but absolutely random, it might be hard to use. Um, so you mean if there's any post ranking currently in, in the fees? Like, if somebody posted content that would be divisive, like to a small subset of people, it would be appropriate and they'd want to see it. But to everybody else, they're like, why is this being sent to me? Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to understand like, how users are served things that they want. So right now, I'm basically serving things if, with a very simple algorithm. I'm ranking it um, chronologically, and I'm assigning them reputation score, and then that's how I rank each post. Um, the, like moderation is a big problem that I have not solved yet. Right now, I'm basically trying to make sure the like as much co content and data is shown to your users without hiding stuff. Um, but the way that I imagine that would happen is you would follow key opinion leaders in the space, and in your home feeds, you'll only see um, the content from the people that you that you follow. Okay, thank you. No word. Uh, hi. hi. I'm not sure if you if you touched on that, but what's how do you verify that the Twitter account is actually yours, and what's the risk of somebody just uh, renting their Twitter account with 5,000 users for people who just want to claim something? Well, that is definitely a problem. Um, Elon Musk, the person who just bought Twitter, couldn't really solve that problem. So for me, like it's not really a problem that I'm trying to solve. 
um, as in if people bought an account off their friends, there's no way for me to verify it. Um, Twitter can verify it and they might shut down that account and then that's how I would like change the reputation. I would probably backwards slash that person. That way that reputation doesn't exist anymore. But that's kind of the problem when you use real life or when you do centralized reputations. You are forced to trust the reputation um, with that is provided by the Twitter API um, versus on Skitter, um, all the data is actually on an open data network that you can query and you can verify. Um, so in a sense, like I'm trusting Twitter to provide me with real accounts and real data and maybe some of the account may be fake, but that's something that like they have to fix and once they fix it, I will move, remove that reputation from their users.